Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, thousands of people are under evacuation orders after a massive fire at a recycling plant in Indiana. What officials are saying about how toxic the smoke is and when it could finally get put out. This morning, almost a carbon copy of yesterday. I just don't know if we have the fog that we saw in some outlying areas. And Mike will answer that question coming up in just a moment. Good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday. It is April 12th. Thanks for joining us. I hope you had a good week so far. Coming in, it seemed pretty clear for me in my drive. Yeah, not bad at all. Uh, the question is about the fog. Uh, nothing out there right oh, now. Good. Yeah, but just be on the lookout for it because we still have kind of the ingredients around, a lot of clear skies. I mean, walk outside. It's actually on the, the chilly side with temperatures that are down a little bit from yesterday. So yesterday was just fantastic. It was perfect. Oh. Gosh, it was so, so nice. Today's going to be another just fantastic, spectacular spring day. A lot of clear skies starting off this morning. And like I said, we aren't seeing any reports of any fog as of yet. We've got temperatures that instead of 50s all around the area, it was kind of mid 50s on average. Now it's some um, mid to upper 40s. 46 is one of the cooler spots there at Bernie Stage. 53 at the airport, 52 Port SA and Converse uh, right around Randolph. And the dew point temperatures are still running neck and neck with the air temperatures. We're only a couple of degrees away in some spots. So that combined with the fact that once again, we don't have much of a breeze out there. The ingredients are in place for some fog to form up. But like I said, uh, last I checked just a few minutes ago, Nothing is being reported yet, but we'll just have to watch out for the next couple of hours. A whole grocery list of allergens out there. Mold and oak are still on the high side and throughout the rest of the morning. Yeah, grab a jacket. Definitely 53 and most of the clear skies. Again, a patch or two of fog here and there. And then later on this afternoon, a little bit warmer than yesterday. We did hit 77 yesterday. We'll be up to 79 later on today almost up to a normal high, plenty of sunshine out there and still okay humidity, not bone dry, but not like slapping you in the face sort of humidity. We are going to get more humidity back here. We got a small chance for a couple of uh, thunderstorms here and there and yet another cool front. We'll get that all sorted out and the timing and everything coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. New this morning, San Antonio police say a man is in critical condition after he was shot on the city's west side overnight. So far, there's not much information on why the shooting happened. Police say afterward, the victim managed to drive to a Whataburger on Marbach, was picked up by a friend and eventually taken to University Hospital. So far, police have not released any suspect information. Detectives are now investigating. And have you seen the following people? So these new images from San Antonio police could hold the answers to a capital murder case that happened back in March. 26 year old Justin Cliff was hurt in a fight and then robbed downtown. He later died from those injuries. Now police say that Cliff got into an argument with four men and two women he did not know. Police also say the people on your screen are accused of being from that group. So police say they stole items from Cliff after he became unconscious from his injuries. So if you know anything that can help investigators find these people, you're asked to call SAPD's homicide unit and you can remain anonymous. New body camera video shows Louisville police officers being fired upon as they arrive at the bank where those five people were killed. It also shows the moments officers confront the shooter and work to rescue a wounded colleague. Two patrol officers who responded to the shooting were wounded. One of them struck in the head by a bullet. Four of the people shot died at the scene. A fifth died Monday night in a hospital. The gunman, an employee of the bank, was shot and killed by police. Some U.S. asylum officers are reportedly frustrated with the Biden administration as it considers restarting a Trump-era policy that would limit who can seek refuge in the U.S. The COVID-era restriction, known as Title 42, is set to be lifted on May 11th. The authority allows border officials to turn away certain migrants at the U.S. southern border. A new proposed regulation would largely ban migrants from applying for asylum if they travel through other countries on their way to the U.S.-Mexico border. The Biden administration says it has opened other avenues for migrants to come to the U.S. legally and avoid the journey to the U.S.-Mexico border. Now to a developing story from the Midwest. Thousands of people evacuated due to a massive fire at a recycling plant in the state of Indiana. And last night, as ABC's Lionel Wise reports, authorities revealed exactly what's burning. This morning, officials call it a worst case scenario. Plumes of black smoke from a fire at this recycling plant in Richmond, Indiana, near the Ohio border. There was a semi-trailer at the rear of the structure 
that was fully involved it was full of plastics the semi trailer uh, had plastics piled up against it and then there was piles of plastic all around that fire quickly spreading with the wind it jumped uh, to another plastics pile. The National Weather Service releasing satellite images showing the smoke from above. And we got ambers and everything else flying over. At one point, more than 2,000 residents were told to evacuate. Shelter down, windows shut, AC units off, and everything. And those outside the evacuation zone who could see the smoke rising in the air urged to shelter in place. The facility processes recyclables, including plastics, which led to concerns about air safety from chemicals released when plastics burn. The smoke is definitely toxic. The EPA and Indiana Department of Environmental Management coming in to test the air quality as fire crews overnight brought in heavy machinery to help get around those semis and piles of plastic blocking their access. We're probably going to be here uh, at least two to three days uh, with the melted plastic. Officials say that fire could burn for days. The mayor is reminding people buses are available to take people to shelters. Lionel Moyes, ABC News, New York. 436, 53 degrees. San Antonio Missions get a nice win against the Frisco Rough Riders last night. Up next, hear from baseball legend Nolan Ryan as he gives his thoughts about two former Spurs players being part of the owners of the ball club. Checking traffic right now at 436. See how things are looking out there. Not a single car at 1604 and Pat Booker <laughs> on the main lanes right now. But that, of course, will change in a matter of minutes. Yes, it will. We'll get busy a little later. And right now with a live cam, we're at 53 degrees. A little cool out there. So go ahead and pack that jacket. And we're going to check in with Mike to see if that nice day will stick around. We'll be right back. Welcome back. After starting the regular season on the road, the missions were back at the Wolf for a six game homestand and their opener with Frisco last night. Mayor Ron Nierberg throwing out the first pitch to Spurs great and Hall of Famer David Robinson. Members of the ownership group were on hand. That's why David was there along with Manu Ginobili and Nolan Ryland. Uh, Manu shook hands, signed autographs and spoke to the crowd. No one was asked about the two Spurs greats being a part of the ownership group. Well, I think it's it's interesting that uh, the ownership is made up of so many outstanding individuals, and and uh, there are so many local people here that are supportive of baseball here in San Antonio. So we were thrilled with that. And time to play ball. Mission strike first with a solo homer. The bottom of the second from Evan Mendoza to make it one nothing. Missions they're going to win their home owner in a shutout, four to nothing. Astros at the Pirates game two, the three game series yesterday. Top of the first, Alex Bregman crushes a ball that was right over the plate, 408 feet. First homer of the year. It's one nothing Astros. Bob in the ninth tied at four when J1 Bay sends Pittsburgh fans home happy with a three run walk off home run to right center field. First walk off of his career and Pirates win it seven to four. Royals of the Rangers last night, no score. Bottom of the second, Brad Miller rips a single back through middle that scores San Antonio's very own Josh Young, and the Rangers lead one zip. Bottom of the fifth, 3-2 Rangers. Corey Seager laces one to left, but as he runs, uh, rounds first rather, he heads to second, pulls up lame, and was done for the game with hamstring tightness. Rangers win 8-5 in 10 via a three-run walk-off by Heim. The 2023 KSAT Pixie and Classic will kick off Friday, August 25th at 7 p.m. with Antonian at Holy Cross at the Alamo Dome. The action on that Saturday begins at 1130 with Somerset and uh, Southside in Somerset. Jefferson and Uvalde are scheduled to kick off at 3.30 and the last game will feature O'Connor at Brandeis at 7.30. You can watch those games live on KSAT 12. They'll be live streamed on all KSAT's digital properties. And that's a look at morning sports. Now 441 and three organic farm fresh, all buzzwords to get you to buy more since they. But are they really worth the premium price? Find out what the big difference is. A warning from a homeowner who rented her home on Airbnb up next, how renters are scamming people and posing as real estate agents. And welcome back. It's 444. Airbnb hosts are warning of a scam where renters pose as real estate agents and list the property for sale. ABC's Gia Benitez has the details in today's GMA First Look.
In this morning's GMA First Look, a warning from a homeowner who rented her home on Airbnb. I was just thinking, how in the world could my home be listed? Melissa Work was shocked to find someone had listed her home for sale. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> and a woman, not the one she rented her house to, was giving tours to potential buyers. I could hear the audio and she was welcoming the family to show them around the home. When Kelly Roth of Oregon saw the listing, she thought she hit the jackpot for her friend who was looking to buy a home, but quickly knew something was just not right. So I went down to the description of the listing and it said uh, for sale by owner, no lawyers, no real estate agents. And coming up at 7 a.m., what you need to know if you rent your home. With your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News, New York. The price of eggs is finally coming down from those $5 a dozen prices. Well, on your side, Marilyn Moritz has our price check and a look at what all those labels like Cage Free and Farm Fresh actually mean. If you're going to scramble some eggs, you've got to crack the wallet. But good news, eggs are getting cheaper. We checked prices. Three months ago, a dozen large grade A eggs at HEB was $4.48. Now, $2.63. Walmart's price also dropped from $5.28 to $2.98. When you shop for eggs, you see a lot of different prices and labels. There's brown and white, cage-free, organic. This one says farm fresh. Are any of those labels worth paying more for? A lot of these terms on egg cartons don't really have any defined meaning. And if you're going to pay a premium price for eggs, you want to make sure you're getting what you think you're getting. Here are some labels she says you can ignore. Farm fresh, natural, and no hormones. All eggs are from farms and all eggs are natural. So farm fresh and natural really has no clear meaning. And by law, chickens can't be given hormones. So a carton of eggs that has these claims isn't really any different from a carton that doesn't. Cage-free can be misleading. True, the hens aren't kept in cages, but they can still be kept in crowded indoor conditions. Free-range chickens do have outdoor access, but it can be tiny. And organic? That means the eggs were laid by hens fed grains grown without most synthetic pesticides or GMOs. The birds can't be in cages and must have outdoor access, but that can still mean confined conditions. Finally, pasture raised. If it's paired with the certified humane label, you can be sure the chickens had access to a pasture. Just be prepared to pay a premium. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Let's check the roads with Transguy. Kind of quiet there at Loop 1604 at Pat Booker, but at least there are vehicles. This is the one that you said there was nobody on the road earlier this shot, right? Yes, okay. ma'am, right well, there. Well, now we have some vehicles moving through well, 448. Well, yeah, of course, with, it's right there at the Loop and yeah. Pat Booker and not too far from Randolph Air Force Base, so we knew it wouldn't take too long. Yeah. Maryland still didn't answer the question, which came first, though. The chicken or the, the egg? egg? <laughs> She's not getting into that. That's a... That's a <laughs> I like how they did take the video of the director. <laughs> oh, okay, like, never mind. Move, move on, move on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, yesterday, National Pet Day, and uh, <laughs> the grand pup, Brody, and what I, he looked very regal and, like, very proud of himself there, posing in all those uh, blue bonnets. It was a great day yesterday to uh, go out and take some pictures in blue bonnets. It's going to be the same thing today, another spectacular spring day. We are starting off with a lot of clear skies out there right now, and it is definitely on the cool side. The normal low temperature is at 57, so right now we're at 53, mid-40s parts of the hill country. Uh, Right, Rob Randolph, 52, Port SA, same thing. Seguin and New Braunfels both at 51 degrees. And we've got humidity, which has actually dropped down a little bit. Dew point temperatures have dropped down a little bit, but the dew points and the air temperatures are very close together. So back combined with the fact that we do have uh, clear skies, allowing the heat to escape out into space, the ingredients are in place for a little bit of fog to form up. So we're not seeing anything yet, but just be on the lookout for the next couple of hours. Compared to this time yesterday, yeah, we're down a good five, close to 10 degrees as far as the dew point temperatures. But like I said, as long as those numbers in the air temperatures are close and you got no wind really to speak of, the fog is possible later on this morning. We are going to see temperatures continue to 
stay basically steady right around again low 50s 40s where you are and then warm up nicely throughout the rest of today. We're going to be in the low to mid 70s already by noon and plenty of sunshine. Just a, again a spectacular spring day out there with a high temperature that's going to make it up to 79. Yesterday we were at 77, so just a couple of degrees above that. And then upstairs in the atmosphere, we've got once again this bone dry air with that darker shade of gray and even that kind of uh, kind of tannish shade, which means no moisture upstairs in the atmosphere, so that means beautiful blue skies. Temperatures are going to start to slowly creep up over the next few days. We will make it into the low 80s tomorrow and Friday. Still OK as far as humidity tomorrow, not oppressive or anything, but we're going to notice the humidity a lot more Friday as well as on Saturday and yeah, just downright hot and humid up to 88 on Saturday and with that extra humidity around here and the it's going to make the atmosphere a little bit on the volatile side. So chances for rain. Yeah, one or two storms Friday, maybe on Saturday, but if something pops could be strong, although the odds of rain are not that great. Then as we go into the rest of the weekend, notice how the low temperatures drop down. That's when the front moves on through here, so that's going to pull in some drier air, which means then Sunday is going to be a fantastic day. So 74 at noon, mostly sunny skies. Great looking day today and then a high temperature up to 79. Get outside and enjoy it. Humidity is still going to be OK and nice little breeze out of the east later on today. 81 tomorrow, 82 on Friday. Again, a chance for a couple of thunderstorms. Look at I mean, 10 percent on Friday, 20 on Saturday, so not great odds of rain. But if something pops, Again, could be on the strong side. We're going to keep obviously watching this over the next few days. And then Sunday and Monday look fantastic. Not too bad. Nope. After a warm Saturday. We'll, we'll, we'll take it, though. Yes. Thank you, Mike. Time right now is 451, 53 degrees. Actor Jeremy Renner debuts a new docuseries following his snowplow accident. Yeah, it's, it's nice to... Uh, nice to have things still come come true for for yourself, right? It's like, you know, there's there's more wonderment still to be had. Coming up next, a first look at Renner's new show, Renervations, and where you can catch it. Taking a look at your lottery numbers this morning: Pick three, eight, eight, nine, Fireball nine, Daily four, six, one, five, five, Fireball five, Cash five, three, eight, nine, fourteen, sixteen, and your Mega Millions: thirty one, thirty five, fifty three. 54, 55, Mega Ball 24, Mega Flyer 3. Good news for House of the Dragon fans. Plus, Jeremy Renner is back after his snowplow accident with a new docuseries. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Look at you! Oh, God. It is so great to see you in every way. Oh, I don't want to touch anything that hurts. Oh, everything's good. Oh. Four months after the snowplow accident that almost cost him his life, Jeremy Renner's new show, Renovations, premieres today. The docuseries, a passion project for the actor and Avengers star, features Renner renovating, rehabbing, and repurposing vehicles and giving them to communities in need. With the help of some famous friends, of course, Renner's almost fully recovered from the accident, dancing his way onto Jimmy Kimmel's stage with a cane earlier this week. Renovations is out now on Disney Plus. Disney is the parent company of ABC News. Oh my God! Speaking of Avengers, it's our first look at the upcoming Marvel movie, The Marvels. The trailer features Brie Larson, Iman Vellani, and Teona Paris in a power struggle of sorts. The film, a sort of sequel to Captain Marvel, is due out in November. Good news, House of the Dragon fans. HBO announced that the Game of Thrones prequel started shooting season two on Tuesday. No word, though, when we'll see it. And happy birthday, David Letterman, the talk show host turning 76 today, while four-time Oscar nominee Saoirse Ronan is 29. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathans in ABC News, Los Angeles. You know, Letterman's had the beard for years now. I still can't get used I to it. I know. I'm so used to him being clean shaven because he was on TV that way for so many years. I guess that's what you call being retired, right? Yeah. yeah. I'm going to have a beard like that one day. <laughs> 456, 53 degrees. This morning, a memorial is growing for the victims in the shooting in Louisville. And now there's newly released police body cam video. We're going to show you that coming up and what police are revealing about the gun used in that shooting. We'll also show you the first virtual fly through of an elementary school that will be built out in Uvalde and when it is set to be built. A quick check of the roads with Trans Sky looking over at Loop 410 at FM 78. Things look okay so far, but our Stephen Cavazos is in the studio, so we'll be checking with him after the break. 
Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. San Antonio police find a vehicle rolled over on its side overnight just ahead. Who they found inside and what caused the crash? I'm ABC's M. Wynn in Washington. The Louisville, Kentucky community continues mourning the loss of five people killed in this week's mass shooting there. See the dramatic body cam video released by the police department coming up. And a good morning to you. It is Wednesday, April 12th. Thanks for joining us. I uh, hope you've enjoyed the nice day yesterday and it might be a repeat today. So let's go ahead and check in with Mike. Yeah, we're actually it is basically going to be a repeat within a couple of degrees here and there. We're actually a little bit cooler starting off this morning. Still plenty of clear skies out there. We're not seeing any fog. Now there are a couple of ingredients in place to see a little bit of fog try and form up, but uh, yeah, just nothing as of yet. Take a look at temperatures uh, around the area right now. We are down, like I said, uh, instead of being mid 50s on average like yesterday, got a lot of 40s out there down to 45 right now. Bernie stage 53 out there at the airport down to 50 now at Port SA Hondo's at 49. Same thing, Rio Medina and then the dew points measure moisture in the atmosphere, which are really, really low. When you look at the scale, we're well below 60, so it's comfortable out there. But these numbers are close to the actual air temperatures and with those clear skies and with light or no wind out there. Again, some of the ingredients are in place to see some fog try and form. So just kind of be on the lookout for that in the next couple of hours. But other than that, it's going to be a spectacular sunrise. Now we still have a lot of mold out there and oak is still on the high side. And then just the list of everything else, pecan grass, mulberry, pine, probably toss some more in there. Temperatures are going to be staying within a couple of degrees over the next couple of hours. Mostly clear again. A patch of fog is possible. The beautiful sunrise and then sunshine all day long. Still decent humidity, not too humid out there. Winds going to shift around to the east 5 to 10 miles per hour. Overall, just another spectacular spring day. Big question is, how long is this going to be lasting? Details on that and a closer look at the weekend coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, good morning, sir. What's going on? Hey, good morning, Mike. Well, I'm giving traffic two thumbs up this morning. Right now, no issues are being reported, but uh, we do have a pretty busy commute for 5 a.m. Let's get a quick look around town. There's 410 at Fredericksburg where we can see uh, maybe a few more folks out there more than what we would see on a normal day, but 10 west there at Loop 1604, not a bad shot. 10 at Proband, though, east and westbound lanes are getting a little bit busier. But uh, as I mentioned yesterday, we do actually have some resurfacing work that just wrapped up here off Loop 410 over on the southbound lanes at FM 78. So that's right at that interchange there. There was a little bit of a delay and you can still see some of that picked up on our map. But remember that work should be wrapping up pretty soon. I don't think it's really going to cause a huge impact when it comes to congestion. But giving you a wide look at the map, it's the same story here. Plenty of green. Plenty of construction. We'll talk about that a little bit later on, but let's get to some travel times if your destination is the Alamo City. If you're traveling in from Seguin, you're still in the green. It's about 30 minutes on those westbound lanes heading in from I-10, about 33 minutes. That's the usual drive time for our friends that are heading northbound from 87 and Lavernia. And right now for our friends down in Floresville, 28 minutes to the Alamo City. Back here in on Trans Guide 37 at 410. Uh, yeah, we're off to a little bit of a busier start, but I have not seen any issues. We'll continue to track the roads closely and we'll have an update on some of those road closures coming up a little bit later on. Mark. Thank you. New this morning, a driver is found trapped in his vehicle with two broken arms on San Antonio's south side overnight. San Antonio police say it happened at the intersection of Roosevelt and McMullen Street around two o'clock this morning. When officers arrived, they found the car had rolled over on its side. Firefighters got there and cut the man out of the vehicle. He was taken to a hospital. Now, police say alcohol was not involved and that the driver was just going too fast on a curve. We're learning more tragic details after San Antonio police say a man shot his ex-wife and their two children inside a Northside home. Alyssa Cole joins us live this morning. And Alyssa, that suspect is now charged with capital murder. Yes, good morning, Mark Stephanie. That 50-year-old Stephen Clare is charged with capital murder as well as two counts of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Murders show Clare and his 28-year-old ex-wife divorced in late December. The couple had been living apart since January of 2022. Meanwhile, one of the children, an 11-month-old girl, has died following the shooting. Her two 
two-year-old sister and their mother are still in the hospital. The mother has had surgery and is expected to survive. So far, we don't know how the two-year-old is doing. We do know two other kids, eight and 11-year-old boys, escaped from the house where the shooting happened. And if you or someone you know is a victim of domestic violence, please encourage them to get help. All the information, phone numbers, websites are on our website. There are several local and state agencies that have free services. All you have to do is just visit our website at ksat.com. Mark, Stephanie. Thank you, Alyssa. We are getting our first virtual fly through of an elementary school that will be built in Uvalde. The Uvalde CISD Moving Forward Foundation made the video and presented it to the community last night. It shows a virtual rendering of what UCISD's newest school will look like when it's completed in the 2024-2025 school year. The foundation formed a committee made up of school officials, parents, community and business members and law enforcement. And they worked with the architecture firm Huckabee to design a school that will last for decades to come. Tim Miller, the executive director for the foundation, says the new school will be secure and mindful of what kids need. The design of the school, making sure that um, the, there's plenty of natural light, um, the colors uh, are... And the new school will be built near Dalton Elementary. Second through fourth graders will be there just like Rob. The plan is to break ground on the new school this summer. A South San Antonio area mom says she needs the community's help finding some kids' jerseys that were stolen in a car theft. The De La Rosa Kia family vehicle was recovered from a theft Monday. Valerie De La Rosa says she, her purse and children's car seats were taken. 21 children's black and green jerseys with the names Rockets were also taken from the vehicle. She's hoping someone knows where they are and will return them before the team's next game this weekend. It's their jersey, it's their color, they already have their number, and it would just be awesome to just, just turn in the jerseys for us. If anyone knows where they are, she's asking they be left at the concession stand at Southside Lions baseball field. De La Rosa says she had no idea about the Kia and Hyundai social media challenge that made her vehicle a target. Now the Louisville, Kentucky mass shooting that killed five people. Several are still in critical condition, including a rookie police officer who rushed to the scene. And as ABC's M1 reports, newly released body camera footage shows the moments officers tried to locate the gunman as bullets rained down on them outside that bank. This morning, a growing memorial outside Old National Bank in downtown Louisville. After a gunman opened fire Monday, killing five employees, injuring eight others while live streaming on social media. Stop right. Newly released police body cam footage showing rookie police officer Nicholas Wilt and his training officer Corey Galloway taking fire as the shooter ambushes them from the bank's lobby, shooting through the windows. Wilt sworn in less than two weeks before, now listed in critical condition after getting shot in the head. Galloway grazed by a bullet before returning fire, killing the 25-year-old shooter. They did absolutely exactly what they needed to do to save lives. Police say the shooter, a bank employee whose sources say was about to be fired, used an AR-15 he bought days earlier. At the hospital treating victims, a doctor speaking out about gun violence. To everyone who helps make policy, both at state, city, federal, I would simply ask you to do something. Because doing nothing, which is what we've been doing, is not working. The weapon used in the Louisville attack will eventually be auctioned off to a federally licensed dealer because Kentucky law bans authorities from destroying seized guns. That murder weapon will be back on the streets one day under Kentucky's current law. The shooter's family overnight, saying there was never any warning signs he was capable of this shocking act. Meanwhile, the White House is again calling on Congress to pass gun reform legislation. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. 508, 52 degrees. YouTube TV is getting ready for its first season of NFL Sunday Ticket. Just ahead, how much it costs and what you'll get in return. I'm listening, and it's a new season for the San Antonio Missions baseball team. Up next, why the new ownership group is facing a new mission of their own in keeping the team in the Alamo City. Let's look out there with live cam. A clearer morning today, and we're starting cool at 52 degrees. We'll be right back. 5-12, minor league baseball is back in the Alamo City. 
fans turned out for the San Antonio Missions 2023 home opener last night at Wolf St Stadium. And however, the ballpark's future is still in question. The new leadership features some similar faces, Nolan Ryan, David Robinson, and Manu Ginobili, just to name a few. The group is already facing challenges from Major League Baseball. It either has to improve minor league facilities, get a new stadium, or potentially lose the team. The situation ownership partner Bob Cohen says they want to resolve as quickly as possible. Well, Major League Baseball has made it very clear that Wolf Stadium doesn't comply with the requirements uh, of what Major League Baseball wants in a minor league stadium. A lot of the things they want are for player health and wellness. New MLB requirements mean Wolf Stadium would need more lockers and bigger facilities for players, something that isn't possible without construction. Cohen says the group is eyeing seven to eight locations to relocate the Missions ballpark. He says they prefer around downtown or somewhere optimal for development, but any decisions on that will likely not be happening anytime soon. We'll keep you posted. 513, 52 degrees. Good news if you use Google TV, we're going to tell you how many more free channels will soon be added onto the service. Plus how IKEA's new virtual interior design service can help you pick out the perfect furniture. I'm the sizzle of this proposal. Tonight, hey, the sparks are going to fly. Hey, Stacy! Kyle? And while Romeo over here is trying to look cool, things are about to heat up. Uh-oh. Darn it, Kyle! And if you don't have the right home insurance coverage, you're going to end up paying for this yourself. Sorry, Mr. Sanchez. Really? So get all state and be better protected from mayhem, like me. That's a hard note. Ugstipated. Feeling weighed down by a backed up gut. Miralax is different. It works naturally with the water in your body to unblock your gut. Free your gut and your mood will follow. Irresistibly smooth chocolate to put the world on pause. Lindor. Made to melt you by the Lint Master Chocolatier. YouTube has announced the pricing for its new NFL Sunday ticket packages. ABC's Rhiannon Alley has details in today's Tech Bites. In today's Tech Bites, YouTube unveils its NFL Sunday ticket package prices. Costs range from $250 up to nearly $500 bucks for the full season. Customers will have to pay less if you have YouTube TV. In December, the company became the owner of Sunday Ticket, paying about $2 billion for the rights. Google TV is offering more content. The service added free channels from Tubi and Plex to its existing lineup of channels. There's also new free built-in channels that can be watched without launching a nap. And IKEA is now offering a virtual interior design service for $99 a room. It includes three video calls with the designer to map out your space in 3D and to furnish it to your liking. Once your furniture is picked out, you can put everything together yourself or IKEA will do it for you for an extra fee, of course. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yes. For three little virtual visits. Mm -hmm. But then oh. you also have to assemble the furniture unless you schedule a different appointment, right? And you know, it's been my experience that building IKEA stuff is, is the simplest thing in the world. Mm. <laughs> 519. <laughs> the pictures are a little bit hard to follow. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah. I need to take a comp day for that, actually. Oh. <laughs> to, to, to put something together. But you once and, it's together, it's really nice. <laughs> All right, let's put things together and see how things uh, work <laughs> yes. on the roads. You know what? Things are moving along just fine over here, guys. Of course, we know that there is still some of that active construction I mentioned a little bit earlier off of 410 at FM 78. That is expected to continue for the next few days. But let's get a look around town. 1604 at Kitty High is not a bad shot, but we are seeing a few people out there this early in the morning. So remember to drive safe. We still have plenty of road closures to talk about, but let's just see a lot of the green on the screen. Some relief there. You can see it uh, really nothing's going to slow you down this early in the morning. But as I mentioned, the big topic, at least right now, will be some of the road work that is expected to take place. Some of it actually starting today right here on the south side of San Antonio off Loop 410. Now we know bridge repairs has been current for a long time, but the work is expected to pick up again here and take us all the way up until next Friday 
April 21st. Now, according to TechSide, this work is expected to begin at 8 in the morning, and it's going to last pretty much all day up until 5 in the afternoon. We'll see various main lane closures in both directions from Somerset Road to South Presa. Again, that work starts today, so plan your commute ahead of time. But other than that, the morning commute has been off to a pretty decent start. We are seeing a few folks out there at 35 at Thousand Oaks, one of the busier corridors. Uh, but Mike, yesterday we had some of that patchy fog. Not seeing any impacts with the commute just yet, though. No, nothing right now. Uh, just be on the lookout for because we still kind of have the ingredients in place. But yeah, there's there's no reports. Everything's just uh, very clear skies right now. And what a beautiful picture there. Thought it was pink, but nope. The white blue bonnet mixed in with the uh, the blues there. So. I love that shot. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. Make sure you keep sending all those pictures in as your gardens begin to bloom and all the pretty flowers and everything else. We got clear skies. Sunrise is going to be spectacular this morning like it was yesterday. It's definitely chilly out there. 45 Bernie Stage, Comfort, uh, 55 Canyon Lake, and then low to mid 50s in and around the metropolitan area this morning. So we are down a good, say, three, four degrees or so, five degrees compared to this time yesterday. And these dew point temperatures temperatures are down as well, but they are very close to the actual air temperatures and with the clear skies out there that allows the heat to escape out into space. So as the temperatures drop down another couple of degrees and we don't have much of a breeze out there this morning, calm or no wind really to speak of, then the ingredients are there for some fog. So as we approach sunrise, which is just after seven o'clock and we'll probably start to see a couple of patches popping up here and there some low lying areas. Temperatures will stay basically steady over the next couple of hours, fluctuate a couple of degrees here and there. Like I said, lots of clear skies, beautiful sunrise this morning, 74 already at noon, and then we are going to make it up to just about normal, normal being 80. Yesterday was 77, 79 today. Still, we are going to have pleasant humidity, enough to notice it if you're outside running around doing yard work or something, but still not bad at all for this time of year. And we got, like I said, very dry air, not only uh, down here at the surface right now, but we've got dry air upstairs in the atmosphere. So that means we're going to have some beautiful blue skies. Satellite picture, obviously nothing is showing up right now. And you look upstream and there's nothing going on. So this is the next couple of days. Lots more sunshine, although we'll see a little bit of low level moisture coming on in here. So a few more clouds going to be building on in by later, especially in the day tomorrow. But today just beautiful out there tomorrow. A couple of extra clouds here and there. Friday, we will have a lot more clouds. Humidity increases and notice how there's one or two little patches of rain. Rain chances are almost nil on Friday. However, if something does pop, because the atmosphere is going to start to get very volatile. Best way to describe it. If something does pop, could be on the, the strong side. And that's going to be the situation on Saturday as well. Uh, a couple, you know, very small chance for some rain around here. But if something pops, could be strong to potentially severe on Saturday as well. Then the front moves through and that's going to, other than one or two clouds, clear us out very nicely going on into uh, Sunday with the lower humidity. Not that much lower temperatures, but very, very pleasant on Sunday. 74 degrees today at noon, mostly sunny skies. High temperature then makes it up to 79. Great looking afternoon. Get out and enjoy it. And then we go into tomorrow and still a pretty nice day. A few extra clouds here and there. 82 on Friday, more humidity. Again, rain chances are really small. However, if something pops could be on the strong side. Front's going to move through late Saturday, and that's going to knock down the humidity Sunday and Monday. Cut my grass yesterday. Yes, it is warm. It is humid doing that. But if you're just out there, it's nice. Yes. So, yeah. Walking through and doing errands wasn't too bad. Right. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Right now, 524, 53 degrees. More Marvel heroes are on the way. Up next in our first look at the Marvels Plus, Michelle Dockery joins Tom Hanks in a new film. Just about 527, Melissa McCarthy getting a big honor, and Marvel previews its latest superhero film. Here's CNN's David Daniel with today's Hollywood Minute. It's hard to tell a story about difficult people and not make a judgment on them. CinemaCon has judged Melissa McCarthy. The National Theater Owners Convention is giving the actress its Cinema Verite Award. She'll be honored in Las Vegas on April 27th, just under a month before she hits the big screen as Ursula in the live action The Little Mermaid. Embracing this this challenge. Of Michelle Dockery is going on a journey. Deadline reports the Downton Abbey star has joined the cast of Here, based on Richard McGuire's graphic novel. Tom Hanks also stars in the film, described as an odyssey through time and memory. Okay. 
Okay, so our powers are entangled. I can manipulate light energy. And you, I can totally show you. No! No! Not again! Hi. Where's our daughter? Wherever you were. Carol Danvers, Monica Rambeau, and Kamala Khan switch things up in the first teaser trailer for The Marvels. The superpowered trio have to team up. We're a team. Oh, no, 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 we're not a we're team. We're not a team. <gasps> and what else saved the universe when The Marvels hits theaters November 10th? In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Time now, 528 and 53 degrees for now. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen has cautious optimism about the U.S. economy. Just ahead on GMSA, why some economists think we might see a recession soon. And these are now the most expensive sneakers to ever sell at auction. Just ahead, why these Air Jordans sold for so much. Ahead on GMSA at 6, San Antonio Book Festival is approaching. We'll get a sneak peek into one author-photographer duo helping in showcasing art around the city. As the Federal Reserve continues to fight escalated inflation rates, many Americans are forced to fork out more for goods and services. However, U.S. economy is obviously performing exceptionally well with continued solid uh, job creation. Up next, why the Treasury Secretary remains optimistic about the economy. Good morning. Oh, hi. Okay, good morning, everybody. It's we'll Wednesday, it April 12th. <laughs> we were going to talk about the weather anyway, so we'll just yeah. go ahead and chat with you. <laughs> now we will look at the uh, live cam picture out there. we got a lot of clear skies. Grab a jacket this morning because it's uh, cool to chilly when you step outside. Temperatures are actually down a few degrees from where they were at this time yesterday. We're at 53 out there at the airport. This time yesterday, we were right around... 58 or so, so down roughly five degrees. The dew point, which, yeah, you get down to 48 at this time of year, that's fantastic. But notice how those numbers are pretty close together, and that's the situation all around the area. We've got temperatures mid 40s hill country, at low 50s in and around the metropolitan area. And then again, these numbers are sort of running neck and neck, and then we don't have much of a breeze out there, and we've got those clear skies. So that allows any leftover heat to continue to kind of escape out into space. So as we go on through the next couple of hours, there's going to be the chance for a few patches of fog here and there. Not showing up anything as of right now, but just be on the lookout for that. Mold Oak are both on the high side, a little bits of everything else. The updated count's going to come out in a couple of hours, so mostly clear this morning. Cool. Again, a patch of fog here or there, even though there's nothing showing up right now. 79 for a high temperature. Another beautiful day, 77 yesterday. Just a couple of spectacular spring days and still okay as far as the humidity is concerned. Now, if you're out running or doing yard work, something like that, yeah, you'll, you'll notice it, but it's not oppressively humid. It doesn't slap you in the face when you walk outside. Tomorrow, still pretty nice looking day. Then the humidity really starts to work its way back on in here. Tuesday, or Tuesday, Friday and Saturday, and it's going to be downright hot on Saturday. Plus, a storm or two is going to be possible. Rain chances Friday and Saturday are really, really low, but if something pops, could be on the strong side. We're going to continue to monitor that over the next couple of days, obviously, and then another front moves through, and that's going to pull in some great weather for Sunday. All the details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, anything going on yet? Yeah, northwest side commuters, Mike, they want to be on the lookout for these flashing lights. We have our first crash reported of the morning, and the shot here is at I-10 West at Loop 1604. Let's get a wider look at Transguide, and you can see that we have first responders out there. I did just speak to our friends over over at Transguide, so they are monitoring the situation. We have at least two different shots from this particular crash scene, so uh, obviously very active right now. And 1604 tends to get pretty busy, probably within the next 30 minutes. But you can see already the commute is starting to pick up just a bit. So for folks that are traveling through the area, watch out for those first responders. Let's hope everyone's doing okay out there. Uh, not seeing a big buildup just yet, but where the crash has been pinpointed is in the westbound lanes of 1604, right near I-10. This is not too far from. Six flags. So again, watch out for those first responders. Who knows how long it will take them to clear this scene up. But well, again, let's hope everyone's doing OK out there. I think we did spot some paramedics on the scene. I, I did notice that we still have a little bit of an orange buildup out there off Loop 410 near FM 78, where we do have that resurfacing work taking place. Crews still seem to be out there at this point. So I would say our, our Wednesday morning commute is off to a busy start. Travel times, though, some relief here. I 10 eastbound of that journey from Bernie should take you about 24 minutes to the 
Alamo City if you plan on traveling this early. About 27 minutes along 281 southbound from Bulverde and a 25 minute drive time for our friends that are traveling in from New Braunfels along I-35 southbound. But let's get it back to the big scene here at I-10 West at Loop 1604. We'll make sure to send a push notification out uh, just to monitor the situation. Again, Transguide it does have their eyes on this as well. Here's a different shot at I-10 at UTSA Boulevard off to a busy start, but we'll continue to track the situation very closely. Steph. Thank you, Stephen. Burgers took a back seat for a man who showed up at a fast food restaurant on the west side. San Antonio police say he needed help instead. That man was the victim of a late night shooting. Katrina Weber is live where officers answered that call on Marbach Road near Loop 410. And Katrina, do they know where he was shot? Well, that's something that police are still investigating. Now, although the call for help came from this Whataburger, this is not where police actually found the shooting victim. They did find his car here, though. Uh, it was parked right outside this fast food spot. Investigators believe that the man drove here after 10 last night after he was shot somewhere else. They say it seems he called a friend who then picked him up here and took him to the gates at Joint Base Lackland. From there, police say an ambulance came, took him to a hospital. Uh, they did spend uh, quite a bit of time here, police did, going through the man's car and collecting other evidence. But it did not appear that they found any quick answers. Uh, police, again, don't know exactly where this man was when he was shot. And so far, they have not made any arrests. Reporting live on the west side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. 536, the most recent consumer price index is set to be released later this morning. And some economists predict annual price increases falling below the 6% seen in February. As CNN's John Lawrence reports, if so, it would be the ninth decline in as many months. As the Federal Reserve continues to fight escalated inflation rates, many Americans are forced to fork out more for goods and services. This has been something that stuck around longer and at higher levels than just about anyone foresaw, and it, that's taking a, a toll on consumers. While inflation has eased slightly from record peaks over the past few months, the U.S. economy is still reeling from numerous issues, including the failures of two banks last month and a yet-to-be-reached agreement on the country's debt limit. However, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen has guarded optimism. The U.S. economy is obviously performing exceptionally well with continued solid uh, job creation. I'm not anticipating a downturn in the economy, although, um, of course, that remains a risk. The International Monetary Fund appears to see a potential risk as it downgraded its global economic forecasts on Tuesday due to, quote, the recent increase in financial market volatility. Given how high inflation is, how long it's been elevated, so the, the potential that it becomes entrenched, it's still more likely than not that we will see a, a recession here in the United States. And our expectation is that probably comes somewhere in the back half of this year. I'm John Lawrence reporting. President Biden is in Northern Ireland to participate in the marking of the 25th anniversary of an agreement that helped the country achieve peace. The United States was instrumental in negotiating an end to sectarian violence that killed thousands over several decades. Biden is on his first presidential visit to Northern Ireland. Today he's set to deliver congratulations and encourage the country's leaders to focus on boosting trade and the economy. After the speech, Biden will travel to the Republic of Ireland for a three-day trip that includes visiting the hometowns of his Irish ancestors. The disgraced founder of Theranos will have to report to prison later this month. A judge has denied Elizabeth Holmes' request to remain free while she appeals her conviction. Holmes was sentenced to more than 11 years in prison for defrauding investors of Theranos, a failed blood testing startup. She was ordered to turn herself into custody on April 27th, but Holmes tried to delay her prison term start after giving birth to her second child. Monday, the judge said it was unlikely Holmes will have her conviction reversed or receive a new trial. 539, 52 degrees. Pepsi is going high tech with its new delivery fleet. Just ahead, how its investment with Tesla is helping the environment. And Michael Jordan makes history again off the court thanks to his shoes. Up next, can you guess how much this black and red pair of Air Jordan 13s went for at auction? With live cam starting cool this morning, 52 degrees, cool and clear. We're going to check in with Mike later on to see if 
how long the nice afternoons will stick around. And welcome back. It's 542 in your morning consumer headlines. Stock for the parent company of Regal Cinemas has hit an all-time low. Cineworld stock plummeted 23% this week on news shareholders would be wiped out. The company said it had submitted a plan to a U.S. bankruptcy court to reorganize the world's second biggest movie theater operator. The news of a shareholder wipeout confirmed a prediction Cineworld had made in February. That followed the company's report that showed that the pandemic cost it just over $3 billion. Wow, that's a lot of money. Pepsi is one of the first companies to try out those new Tesla semi-trucks. The beverage giant now the owner of 18 of the big blue futuristic looking trucks. Pepsi's goal is to use 100% renewable energy with zero emissions for its deliveries. The company hopes to get 100 more of the electric powered semis by the end of the year. It's believed the fleet will eliminate more than 1,000 metric tons of greenhouse gas every year. Michael Jordan sneakers are still making history, but it is on the auction block instead of the basketball court. The NBA legends black and red Air Jordan 13S are now the most expensive sneakers ever to sell at auction. So yesterday the sneakers sold for, get this, $2.2 million as some of these in New York. Jordan wore the shoes back in 1998 when he took home a victory for the Chicago Bulls during game two of his final championship. I, I don't want to be bashful, but I did I did buy these. Okay, and, uh, and <laughs> you'll be wearing decide, them tomorrow. <laughs> do I put them on a shelf in my bedroom, or do I just keep them in the box I got them in? Uh, you should display those. Okay, if, thank you very much. If you bought them. 544, 52 degrees. And ready for a new best friend, the Animal Defense League is standing by with a precious pet that needs a new home. And checking Transguide 410 at FM 78. We had a scene there earlier, but it looks like it's gone. We'll talk to Steven right around the corner. I'm just in weird <laughs> and there and there's I'm just enjoying the little kisses from the, I know. The little one. So what do you got there? So I must taste like cotton candy, but this is cotton candy. Um, cotton candy is a two-month-old, a little bit of a terrier, kind of a rat terrier mix. Yeah. Just a sweet puppy. Um, just wants to say good okay, morning. Okay, I'll go kissy too. Yeah, you go, yeah, you boo, boo. So obviously not going to be a big dog. At no, all, as so. you can tell, um, with the paws, not a big dog. Definitely going to be a, a cute little dog, probably around kiddos. Um, definitely, but still needs lots of chew toys. I'm mm -hmm. going to tell you that. So and lots of exercise. And there's a lots little tail going to town as well. Yes. So. All right, and things they need lots of are dog and cat food, wet specific. Specifically, wet dog and cat food. It doesn't have to be a specific yeah, brand. Doesn't matter what the brand is. No. And any time. Anything that's in a can. Correct. For Correct. Now, and dogs and cats, not puppies. Puppies too. So puppies, okay. kittens, dogs and cats. We need these specifically for our fosters. Mm -hmm. um, if they can't, like if they're too small, a little bit smaller than sweet cotton candy, they will use that. Again, any kind. You can go to your local H E B or on our Amazon wish list. Okay. So to where you don't even have to go to the come to the shelter, you can just purchase it and it'll be delivered. Yeah, even if you you know <laughs> for grocery shopping. <laughs> yes. Toss a couple of cans right in there. Exactly. Them off and, and just take them. A Yes. Them, so. Something okay. else we need too is peanut butter. Um, we need peanut butter. We use it for our enrichment items for our, our sweet puppies. So um, definitely not the crunchy peanut butter, yeah. but the smooth peanut butter. Again, at the grocery <laughs> store, just you know, a couple yeah. of jars of this stuff and then just toss butter. it in and, and come by and see us. Don't forget about all of their uh, Fiesta stuff and medals and everything else. And head on over <laughs> to 4804 Fredericksburg Road, 226-7461 or sahumane.org. Thank you, dear. Thank you. And thank you to the Humane Society for sharing some of their awesome Fiesta medals this year. Yeah, they were pretty cool looking. And of course, cotton candy there was super cute. Time now, 549. Let's check back with our Stephen Cavazos. You know, better news out here, guys. Uh, 10 West at 1604. We did have a pretty serious crash. I was reported. In fact, TxDOT actually reported the severity of that crash as high, which means that it was obviously uh, pretty important for folks to be aware of what was going on out there. I mean, anytime you see flashing lights, you need to be aware of what's happening on the roads. But when it's a severe crash like that, it could lead to big delays. And it does look like as quickly as that crash popped up, it also looks like it's already cleared out. Check out 10 West.
Northwest at 1604. This is a shot we showed you earlier, much different and smooth sailing for a lot of those folks out there. Now, this crash was reported in the westbound lanes near 1604 at I-10, not too far from Six Flags. So uh, again, uh, hoping everyone was OK, but it does look like the crash was cleared out rather quickly. Giving you a wide look at the map, though, uh, nothing else has popped up on our radar. We just see plenty of that active construction here in the Alamo City and Bear County. But for our friends in Wilson County, just a quick reminder, we're going to see that cable installation take place. Now, remember, this is going to take us all the way up until Tuesday, April 18th. The work begins at 8 in the morning and hopefully we'll wrap around 4 in the afternoon. Various lane closures in both directions from the Bear County line to FM 536. But you can always head over to ksat.com slash traffic for a full list of all the current closures that are happening in our area. So again, plan your commute ahead of time. But the good news here is that crash has already cleared out. So things look great as we are driving off into the 6 a.m. hour. Yes, we are. Thank you, Stephen. Good news there. As you are driving off eastwardly this morning in this direction, <laughs> take your sunglasses because we're going to have another spectacular sunrise coming up here later on this morning. We got, uh, as you can see off in the distance, maybe a, a couple little clouds out there. And that is about it for right now. And it is definitely on the, uh, the chilly side. All right, Yvonne found the culprit. That's why there's no suet for all the birds out there. <laughs> Thanks to the squirrel. Yes, they look so cute, but oh, goodness gracious. Anyway, thanks for the uh, the case that connect picture, Yvonne. Appreciate that. All right, temperatures. Yeah, it is definitely leaning toward the chilly side, not just cool, but chilly when you've got mid 40s and even low 50s in and around the area. And the humidity, of course, is very, very low. You got to have low humidity, get these temperatures down here. But the, these numbers, dew points, are really close to the actual air temperatures. And I keep saying all morning long, with the, the clear skies, the heat continues to escape out into space. And we've got hardly any of, bit of a breeze out there as of right now. So that's why we do have the chance for a couple of patches of fog to pop up in the next couple of hours. Compared to this time yesterday, the air has dried out even more so, down 8 degrees compared to uh, at right around 551 yesterday morning and uh, down 10 degrees in Hondo. Dew points have dropped 14 at Carrizo Springs. So we did get up to 77 yesterday, a couple of 80s on the map, and then later on today, add a, just one or two notches to that. So in and around the area, we are going to be up right around 79, 78 degrees. 80 is the normal high temperature here in town, so right where we should be, basically. We're going to be staying uh, within a few degrees this morning, fluctuating here and there. Watch out for a patch or two of fog, and then warm up very quickly over the course of the late morning, up to uh, 74 at noon. Top off, like I said, 79 later on today. The wind, which is out of the northeast, has been pulling in all this dry air, not only down here at the surface, but also upstairs in the atmosphere. It's going to start to shift around to the east a little bit. Still, humidity is going to be very pleasant later on this afternoon. Afternoon. Tomorrow, still pretty good. Then Friday, it starts to kind of come back on in here. Long range computer model, uh, nothing going on today. Couple of extra clouds around here tomorrow. And Friday, yeah, the small chance for a shower or two late in late afternoon, evening hours. Now, the odds of rain are very small. However, if something pops on Friday, the atmosphere is kind of volatile. So yeah, it could be strong to potentially severe. That's going to be the same thing on Saturday. And then after that, we got a front moving on through here, and that's going to clear things out very nicely uh, later Saturday. And then Sunday is going to be just a glorious day. So 74 at noon, mostly sunny skies. 79 high temperature today. Another beautiful day to uh, get outside again, though, if it's one of those days where if you're doing some work outside, the humidity will eh, you'll notice it like cutting the grass as I did yesterday. But other than that, really nice weather today. Really nice weather tomorrow, Friday, eh, Saturday, very hot and humid, <laughs> beautiful on Sunday again. My mower is broken. It has it been is. now for uh, a couple of years, and I have a very nice neighbor who oh, okay. is very generous <laughs> with his, but I mean, it's like a postage stamp lawn. Does he cut uh, it or loan it to you? He cuts it. Really? Yes. That is very generous. But I've done it for other neighbors you in the past. You trade him barbecue then, because you're uh, the big, you know, barbecuer. It always works out in the end. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> 553, 52 degrees. That's where. Right, the neighbor. <laughs> Let's look at the winning lotto numbers. Pick three, eight, eight, nine, fireball nine. Daily four, six, one, five, five, fireball five. Cash five numbers three, eight, nine, fourteen, sixteen, and mega millions thirty one, thirty five, fifty three, fifty four, fifty five, mega ball twenty four, mega plier three.
Good morning, coming up here on GMA, so much to get to. And of course, we'll start with the very latest on President Biden's meeting right now with the UK Prime Minister amid the massive leak of those classified documents exposing top secret US intelligence to the world. We're gonna break down what it could all mean for the war in Ukraine and if more leaks are coming. Ian Panel is on the scene in Kyiv. Our Mary Bruce, live with the president this morning. That and so much more coming up right here on GMA. Ahead on GMSA at six, as, six rather, as the San Antonio Book Festival approaches, we're getting to know one author, photographer, duo, and how they're helping showcase art around our city. Plus, latest in that massive fire at a recycling plant up in Indiana, officials urging thousands of residents to evacuate. What's being done as the fire continues to burn out? And Trans Guide right now, no problems at 1604 and Pat Booker. We have had some flashing lights off and on for the last hour, but so far so good unless something happens in the next few minutes and Stephen will let you know.